Hello, and welcome to the Nonfiction Authors Podcast, where we interview experts who help you learn how to write, market, publish, promote, and profit from your book. The podcast is brought to you by the Nonfiction Authors Association.com, which is the home of the Nonfiction Writers Conference.com. We have several membership levels, all of which offer discounts on our live courses and so many other benefits. Find out more at nonfictionauthorsassociation.com slash join. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Nonfiction Authors Podcast. I'm your host, Carla King, and today our guest is Ryan Scott to talk about synthetic or AI voices for your audiobooks and other content. Let me introduce our guest, and then we'll start the conversation. Ryan has a long history in technology and the internet. He began with co-developing opt-in email marketing, then created CauseCast, a platform that empowers large corporations to make a difference through volunteering and giving. In recent years, though, his focus shifted toward cryptocurrencies and augmented and virtual reality, and he's working to demystify AI and make it accessible for everyday marketers, entrepreneurs, and of course, authors. Most recently, Scott has been building AI applications, including one for automatic blog post creation and a chatbot service. His latest is Audi AI, a website where authors can quickly and automatically create an audiobook from a manuscript. Hi, Ryan. Welcome Hi, to the Carla. podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And I'm excited to discuss the latest in our AI and specifically today, Synthetic Voices as regards your text-to-speech platform, Audi AI, which I've I've looked at and tested a little bit, and it's awesome. When did you launch Audi AI, by the way? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like we're in a continuous process of launching. And in fact, um, after we launched, we um, found right away what the issues were that people were having and what they really needed. You kind of can't know what people really need until you kind of put it out there for them. Um, and found very quickly that some of the features that we had planned were were needed sooner rather than later. And so we kept it out there, but we also went back to the drawing board and uh, you know created some of those features. Like for example, the ability to do multiple voices in one document was a very popular idea with folks. So we went back and created that. And then I would say we kind of relaunched it yesterday. <laughs> kind of like books and beta readers and drafts. And it's all. exactly like it. It's exactly like it. But the only difference, you know, we really need a beta test on the public yeah, uh, because we don't know uh, either and until everybody starts using it really what, you know, are the, what's the things that kind of really resonate with folks and how do we double down on those? And it's developing so quickly. And I read in AI breakfast a few weeks ago, actually, that I'm going to quote here. We may be in the last few months of AI generated audio being indistinguishable from authentic recordings. What do you think that means for authors and readers? <laughs> Well, you know, I think it really it provides an opportunity for authors to reach a, a wider audience. You know, a lot of uh, authors, you know, don't necessarily have the time or the money in order to go and get a book read by a professional. And I think, you know, that there's still, uh, you know, room for professionals to be doing the reading. But, you know, what about the folks that can't afford it and don't even know where to find, you know, the readers? I think audio, you know, really provides an opportunity to get your audio book without having to go through that long process or that you know, big expense. And I think for, for some authors, you know, they do want to read their own book, but find it pretty challenging to sit down and, you know, read their whole entire book uh, on audio. It is a very time consuming process. And, you know, I think, you know, authors maybe aren't necessarily, Hey, I'm one, of, I, I would like my voice, but I don't necessarily consider myself to be, you know, a professional reader. We could still take their voice and allow them to read their book, you know, through the power of AI. Well, I'm raising my hand on that one because I have tried to narrate my own books and my voice just gets tired. Yeah. Um, so I gave up. So I'm going to just let's let's wait on the voice cloning because I really want to talk about that um, and just start with how does AI speech technology actually work? There's a couple layers to the process. One is just the ability to synthesize somebody's voice. Uh, and there's been, you know, many years of research through, you know, folks that uh, get paid a lot more than me to, to figure this stuff out, who have been, you know, working tirelessly for many, many years to come up with synthetic voices. 
And I think even you know today, you'll still see synthetic voices on YouTube videos, for example, that they don't sound very realistic and are completely expressionless and kind of sound you know stilted and awkward. And that really was the state of the art until you know very very recently. But you know as technology continues to advance and we have you know larger and larger computers that have more memory and they run faster and faster, we're able to put uh, a lot more data, a lot more samples of people speaking uh, into the computer for it to look at. And so it's it's what's called machine learning. It's less where you're, you're typing code and saying exactly what to do and more of it's observing what it's seeing in the data and kind of trying to recognize patterns, much in the same way that a human brain works. And that that is really what it's what it's based on. Okay. So it's kind so of learning like a person. Great. So then it's learning not only the words and the grammar, but also intonations, for That's right. instance. Yep. Inflection, context. Mm-hmm. You know, you can read a sentence many different ways. And in, uh, in English, you could change the meaning quite significantly with, with your tone. Uh, but, you know, in the terms of an, an audio book, you know, reading it in different ways will just uh, sound, uh, it'll still, it'll sound more natural. You know, you're going in it with, you know, different pacing at different parts of the sentence. And the AI uh, now can do that. Uh, sounds quite realistic, you know, simply because of that. I think people listen for that syntheticness and want to hear things being repeated kind of the same way. And when it doesn't do that, they're very surprised. I want to go back to something you said about why authors would use a synthetic voice instead of their own or an actor. I think for a lot of fiction, people want to use actors because mm. they really act out the sure. parts, right? And I know AI <laughs> speech technology is co- coming with that as well. But for the nonfiction author, I was thinking about the difference between my memoir, which is a creative nonfiction project and needs to be acted maybe by me, and my self-publishing guide, which is a straight instructional manual, which doesn't need to be acted at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that seems to me perfect for an AI project. Yes. I mean, it, it's that is a definitely a, a kind of a natural. Although, uh, you know, when I'm, you know, in there playing with the voices, I do find that there's some of them that are particularly good for nonfiction books, and they've got a very kind of direct, you know, tone. You get some that might be good for, uh, you know, a nonfiction book about a war uh, would be different than a nonfiction book about something, com- you know, something else entirely, mm-hmm. uh, you know, business, for example. And uh, you know, some voices are more commanding, some voices are more, you know, deep and strong, uh, but they all sound. I guess the the one thing that kind of ties them together is just the realism behind it, and that you can you can listen to it for quite some time, uh, like you could a, a human voice. But I think you know to address one other thing that you said, if you don't mind, uh, the ability to have it acted was something that I thought too would be very tough to do. Uh, but there's kind of two ways that that's a, a, approached, and and it's I've heard some very convincing voice acting uh, done through the AI. Uh, part is in picking you know the right voices that kind of had the, the the right tone to begin with. Uh, but the other is the context of what's written. Um, the AI can pick up on the context and start to add excitement in, uh, just like a human reader uh, would do. I would say it's still a little shy of being you know Hollywood actor level. But the second part of this is, you know, what's coming out soon is the ability to add uh, not only the context part of it, but to add clues about what's going on. So even out of context, somebody could yell something in an excited way. Well, you were not going to pick it up from context clues, but, you know, a human would pick it up and and say it in a more excited way. So you'll be able to add those types of things into kind of, you know, cue the AI up that they should read something in an excited way or in a a way that's kind of different than the context. So perhaps in a memoir or any creative nonfiction book that has emotion in it or a story in it, there would be clues in the story about setting and situation that would key the synthetic voice to read it in a like a depressed way or an excited mm-hmm. way without having to program in, you know, some special code in into the writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. So you, you, what you talked about there was the context side of it. And as you're reading a book, you do pick up the context, of course. And when you're reading in your head, you kind of know how to how to read it. But in the case of the AI, it can pick up those clues as well. But when there's cases where you do want to sort of override what the AI thinks it is, you will be able to, you know, without writing code, but you just like click, like, hey, 
go to press mode right over here. Oop. They don't have the ability to do it with the emotion, but they're doing it with the voices. We're like, oh, I really want this voice here. I want this voice here. And they're spending the time to actually tag their, their books, even though that could be pretty time consuming. Okay. So let's go through that. So you go to Audi and you upload your manuscript. Mm-hmm. I would say you probably strip out the copyright page and all of that. You choose a voice. How many voices are there to choose from now? Mm-hmm. Um, How many do you think there will be in like by the uh, end with 2023? That's a great <laughs> question. Um, so we have about a hundred voices in there mm-hmm. and some of them have been, you know, put in as uh, samples and some of them have been um, generated kind of programmatically uh, based on different parameters. Um, and we create new ones, you know, every day or so we, we pop another one in there just based on really what the, the folks using it have asked for. Like, I need somebody who has a, a New York voice or, you know, that type of thing. Uh, but then uh, what's you know becoming just more and more popular, uh, especially as folks find out about it, is the ability, they, they want to clone their own voices. Uh, they say, I really do want to read my own book. I just don't have that kind of energy you know, to keep it up for, for that long. And so that is uh, something that we'd be doing quite a bit. Uh, so those voices go in privately. Uh, so the author can only have access to their own voice. Uh, you know, in fact, we did a uh, anthology. We've done four anthology books that had 10 authors in each. And so, you know, they spent the time to get their voices from YouTube videos where they were speaking on stage or, you know, doing a, a, a webinar or something and cloned them and put them in there. And then we just assigned them to the correct spot. Uh, and then the book is read in 10 different voices. What if I haven't been a public speaker or anyway? How do I, hmm. how do I, do, is there a place where I can program in my voice or do I have to create a YouTube video or something? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, there's uh, going to be the ability right on the site to, this should be up there in a day or two, to clone your voice. So you just hit a button and then you speak for a few minutes. We really only need about five minutes of audio to be able to clone, you know, really? a, a voice. Yeah. And so you from my one voice, minute. you could, you could like, just artificially create intonations or that thing that I just said, really? So I was surprised, you know, or pick you up know, on let's that. talk seriously now, right? You, you yeah. get that from just five or 10 you minutes? Can. Look, if you and your five minutes never do that type of thing where you, you know, say really, you know, it's not going to pick up on it, of course. But if we took this, you know, interview and, and I, you know, pulled your voice out of it, uh, it would pick up on that type of thing. And that's actually an interesting experiment that we should try. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) let's do it. (laughs) I'm excited. (laughs) Okay, I have my manuscript. I go to the website. I upload the text. It takes a while to process. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, It takes really seconds. You can even select some of the text and say, I'd like to test it to make sure it's... So then let's back up. So then it appears on the screen. And what are the tools, like, does it appear with a bunch of tools on the left or the right? What are the options? All the text is in the middle. And then right. on, on the uh, right-hand side, you can see your chapters mm-hmm. and you can generate, there's a button to generate text for each one of the chapters. So you don't mm-hmm. say, do the whole book at one time and then you wait and then you realize, oh, I should have changed something and, or, or whatever. Uh, that wastes a lot of uh, time for the AI. Uh, then there's also a little button where you can click to uh, select the voices. Um, there you could, if you have multiple voices, you could just click in your text where you want the next voice to be and hit the voice and it puts a little tag in there. It says, you know, Carla speaks here and then mm-hmm. the other, you know, Ryan speaks here. Uh, and then that's it. You just hit generate uh, and it generates, it takes, you know, to do 10 minutes of audio uh, takes about a minute of uh, the process. It's very, very quick. So you could do mm-hmm. your whole book in, you know, very short amount of time. Okay, so the feature that's coming um, will probably be out by the time this podcast is published is uh, I could have a paragraph or a chapter spoken by one person, click that. Um, So that is the slow process of assigning voices. So if you have dialogue, for instance, like in my memoir, I have dialogue. So I could actually have a male South African voice do the male South African guy in my book, right? That's exactly right. And in fact, that slow process of tagging is another part that we are able to automate using AI. And so that's not here yet, but I was literally working on it uh, today. And it's just incredible to see, you know, you put it, uh, you feed it to something like ChatGPT and say, identify all the speakers and put a tag in front of their name and give it no context whatsoever. It figures it all out and it puts the tags in front. And so we'll have that ability on the website. Wait a minute. So I put my, or you help me put my manuscript in ChatGPT. No, uh, you would just come to our website 
and you mm-hmm. would up hit, you know, load the manuscript. It would load it up and then you'd hit a button that would say identify speakers. And it would just put all the little voice tags in front of all of them. And then you would just need to say, oh, I want this one to sound, to use this voice. This character uses this voice. So how the heck does it, like, does it look at dialogue tags? How does it know who's talking? Well, I, the same way a human does, right? It, I, that's When they're so, reading, yeah, right? When they're reading, right? It really just reads it. And as long as the author has made it clear whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, whether they don't tag it, like Hemingway is famous for not tagging. It's just, yes. he said, she said, he said, you know, you know, they, they, he doesn't identify them, but you know, because he's a skilled writer. Right. right. And you know what? Chad GPT is actually very good at picking that out. It seems to be as good as a human. I did some tests and I deliberately made some uh, text that was confusing. I didn't say, I didn't identify one of the people at all. It was just, they said something about a mother and then she heard of, of there was a voice from the other room saying, you know, hey, I heard that um, and that should come from the mother. And it identified that it was the mother. So I was pretty impressed with that. I took a, a segment of a book uh, from one of uh, our clients and I didn't take enough of it. And at the end it said, it was, it said, I, I'm unable to identify who the speaker is. Um, so yeah, it just talks to you like a human. It's, it's kind mm-hmm. of, uh, it's a little eerie, uh, mm-hmm. but very powerful. It is. Okay. So there's a lot of technologies involved and you're probably using some of those behind the scenes. Like Absolutely. Big database. Who are you using? What database are you using for that? And maybe you just said you are using behind the scenes chat GPT or that source yes. for that. Can you talk about how those are developing and feeding into your systems and other people's systems? Yes. And, you know, I would say like most online applications, it were a collection, you know, we're built kind of on the shoulders of giants mm-hmm. um, and you know, Audi came about because I saw, you know, chat GPT, of course, and, and some of the power that was, was there to work with long documents. And I also saw there was a, there was a lot of different voice synthesizers coming out and they don't really work in the sense of like, you could type your whole book into them and then hit, you know, submit, and then you have a book. They, it didn't have that capability. They were more like, here, you could type in a little box and we'll convert it into audio for you. And they work through an API so that our system can then talk to their system. So we created a system that allows an author to use something like that in a way that would be more familiar to an author. Yeah, that's called Eleven Labs. Um, and you know, out of everything that we've ever seen, that's it's far and away the best. Yeah, I did test that early on. Eleven, a friend of mine alerted me to them, and I was like, "Oh, that that sounds a lot more real than any of the others." Text to speech. Yeah, it gives you goosebumps sometimes. Like, it did. Yeah, even, I think with some of the voices, you really want to hear them. Like you're like, it sounds kind of delicious in your ear. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, they've done that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they might be. Right. And we're used to it now. I mean, Siri's talking to us all the time. And what sure. my dad has a, a British woman, Siri. <laughs> and, <you know>. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. It's whatever you like. Uh-huh. I do want to make clear that this this uh, tool that you have it does the audio, and then do you get it in mm. good shape? So then you can upload it to find a way or ACX or whatever. How do, you, mm-hmm. how do you take it from there? Yeah, that's a good question. Everything in th- there's a there's very standard formats uh, mm-hmm. that all, everybody wants to receive it in, and they're all MP3 files. They're all the music files essentially that we've been using for years, and they are just you know numbered with the the chapter as we've you know found them, um, and then the name of the chapter .mp3, and those files can be you know directly uploaded anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can just get them right from the site. You just hit download my files. Yep, great. And I know Amazon has forbidden. We went to that earlier. Has forbidden artificial voices, uh, but pretty soon they're not going to be able to tell. They're not going to be able to tell, and I think it's going to be very hard to resist this. You know the. The top fastest growing um, what a segment of books are um, AI written or AI contributed to. And, you know, if people want to read them, they're going to be selling them. And in fact, they are selling the AI books, AI written yeah. books. So I, I don't, I think, I, I really, I completely understand why they wouldn't have wanted these AI read books in the, in the past. They did sound terrible. Yeah, and, you know, I think they have a, a quality standard they, they need to adhere to, or it really lowers the value of their entire, you know, catalog. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that, you know, that day has uh, come to an end. Mm-hmm. 
It has. And there, I just do want to mention that, you know, the caveat is this podcast episode is about how authors can use synthetic voices in AI. And I know there's a lot of legal and political and uh, ethical issues that are being talked about right now about AI and, and rights and voice training and training. Like my website is being, you know, being used for knowledge, but not fair use. It doesn't fall into fair use and all of that. And I will definitely have another episode that has a lawyer in it to <laughs> discuss that. But for now, we have these cool tools, which I always appreciate. Uh, you know, authors are a huge market, and there are all these potential books, uh, books being written right now that have a lot of potential for audio. And be- it doesn't cost that much to create an AI uh, generated audio book. Can you talk about the price ranges and yeah. the word counts and the actual cost? Sure. So we charge uh, based on the the usage, which is Mm -hmm. uh, very much in line with how we're charged. So if the user or the author, let's say, is using it to do a lot of tests, those do can rack up some you know charges. And by rack up, I mean they are still incredibly small compared to having a human do it. So the average book would be say maybe it was around five hundred thousand characters, which I know isn't the normal way to talk about a book. But that's kind of how we do in the in the tech world. Would mm-hmm. be maybe three hundred and thirty dollars. I mean, that's that's the size of our our biggest account, and so that's enough to do a book and do a bunch of testing on it as well, and making changes and really kind of spending your time to do it right. I see. So you're paying eleven labs and the Chat GPT databases. What what is it called? Well, OpenAI's open AI. paying OpenAI. That's for you're sure. paying OpenAI. You're paying eleven labs, and so you're paying for time. So we're paying for that time. Exactly. But under three hundred dollars is, you know, a pretty. Yeah. From what I've seen with the prices of doing an audio book, it's it's quite mm-hmm. expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And the, the, besides books, um, what do you think the other potential for audio is hmm. now? I, I was thinking about just making your blog post audio, for example. Yes, I think that's a great use case, and we've heard about that uh, quite a bit. So folks are using it for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you need to ha- kind of be multimodal with with as a marketer. You need to be multimodal, and well, as a book author, you you kind of are a marketer as well, right? Uh, and so, yeah, taking your blog posts and, and having audio for them very important. People are using it to put uh, voiceover on their videos. You know, who can talk like a, a radio announcer? You know, well, Audi can do it, but, you know, I certainly can't do it. So, you know, using it for things like that as well. And it's, again, indistinguishable from a human, and especially in that kind of use case where you're putting some music and so using it for that. But uh, one use case that actually is still audiobooks that I was kind of surprised about, I, I just today was looking up the history of audiobooks and found that um, it started in the 1930s, the American Foundation for the Blind and the Library of Congress. They had a, a project, the Adult Blind Project, were the first to pr- produce audiobooks. One of our very first clients that came to us is an organization called um, Christian Recording Service. And what they do is they take uh, copyrighted books, and they're allowed to do this, the government allows them to do it, take those books, turn them into audiobooks, and then they provide both Braille uh, and audiobooks to you know the, the folks that can't see as well, which I thought was really a great use for, for this technology. That is a great use. You know, here is a use case that I think is important. The, a podcast, you, you can max out in a country how many viewers or how many listeners that you have, but you can really expand your audience by converting it into other languages. It is happening now. It's in kind of the early stages right now. But yes, it's happening. And, you know, it'll be, say, Carla, you were doing it and you wanted to, you were speaking, you know, Afrikaans or something like that. You could absolutely do that. It would sound just like you. It would laugh like you, but it, you'd be speaking a completely different language. That's kind of amazing because I do have a lot of readers in Holland, Germany, mm. and Sweden, <laughs> yeah. and China. So I could literally, I could read my own memoir in all of those languages yes. in those markets. And it would take you five minutes of talking. So I want to know when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I think with um, marketers, what we're seeing, especially because of the rise of AI, is we're seeing them automate a lot of their marketing processes. Mm -hmm. And so a natural part of that, if you're creating ads in an automated way and want to reach a big audience and you want to have an automated process, you're going to need to automate the audio part of it as well. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a natural part of it. So I think that's the biggest thing right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think there's a ton of, obviously, a ton of uh, different ways that it can be used. What are you most excited about? 
Oh gosh, that's a great question. I think uh, I really, I, I, I kind of like the idea of kind of these old timey radio plays, <laughs> you know, where they're reading with a ton of expression. And even I think, you know, adding audio sound effects and things like that. I think it just, it, I don't know, it's maybe it shows my age, but it's just sort of very evocative. And I kind of like the idea of being able to create them without having to assemble a gigantic team to make it happen. I think with oh. all these technologies, it's, it's that what, how much can you do as one person is it's gotten to be so much. You could make your own productions. And that to me is very exciting. You could produce your own play with sound yeah. effects and, you know, that's great. I mean, I listen to audio books probably more now than I read because I'm doing a lot, you know, sure. um, driving or walking right. housework. Or, and I think a lot of people are. And since we look at our screens so much and I, I look at my screen so much, I have my Kindle, but I'm reluctant to open that up because it's more screen time. Yeah. And I really love the voice acting as well. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. So I'm really glad you have the time to talk with us and I hope well, you'll come back Colin. and give us an update. I'd love to. And in the meantime, where do we find you and your writing and your progress and all of this? I think the best place to go would be audi.ai. Thanks again. And we'll talk later about more cool new stuff <laughs> in the future, in the very near future, I hope. Thanks, Carla. And thank you to our listeners for joining us here on the Nonfiction Authors Podcast, brought to you by the Nonfiction Authors Association and the Nonfiction Writers Conference. We hope you'll subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Visit the Nonfiction Authors Association's website for show notes and transcripts for this and every episode, and you can find the video edition on our YouTube channel. Until next week, remember, keep writing, producing, improve your craft, and publishing your work. The world needs your experience and expertise. Thanks.